and welcome to our show, Geeks Are Wired Podcast, where we talk about video games, comic books, technology, and TLDR, smart things. Or IoT, or Internet things. <laughs> smart things, really? Smart things. That's what IoT is. Internet of things. Smart things. We like smart things. Things that are smart. They're Turf. not very smart. They listen in on you. Well, they do. But then you can also uh, review it. Hey, actually, good segue. Uh, you don't have it listed on your things to talk about. You mean that that thing right there? Um, <laughs> uh, no, actually, not that. Oh, it's not the Amazon. No, there's a. I don't remember who. I think it was a college, but they released a software that lets you listen in on your IoT devices at home to see what all they're sending and how much they're communicating. Oh yes. Oh, that, that that's a different thing. Yeah, there it is. That Wait. is a different thing. That, no, I I have that one too. Where'd it go? Also, hi everyone. I didn't get to oh, introduce yeah. myself. <laughs> Just skipping the introductions. All right. This is Senior Anthony. Hi, Anthony. Hi, Bill. I am Senior Bill. Doesn't just doesn't sound the same. Senior Bill. <laughs> no. I am just a Senior Bill. Senior William. How about that? I am William. <laughs> William. You're talking about Princeton. Yeah, that thing. Yeah. Yeah, I do. This has actually been on. Our show notes for like a month. Oh, because it I barely want... showed up in the news the other day. Oh yeah, I phone. I heard about it a little bit ago, uh, because it's also beta sign up. Last time I looked at this, let's forget that. Huh? It may have gone further, I but think, yeah, I think it's actually public now. Ooh, well, that could be wrong. That could be nice. Uh, well, I guess we could look at the updates. But at the time, what you do is you take this uh, device. Or you take this thing, put it on your network, and it listens to everybody talking to each other. This means you can find out what of your devices send out information that is not co- uh, encoded, which they were very surprised at how much a there of, were. A lot of things don't. Yeah. A lot of things. A lot of it's not encrypted. Which is really sad. because. Um, that, what do you install it on? Uh, I think I don't imagine you'd be able to use it for on like a Windows computer because it probably wants to put the network card in. Uh, I can't remember the name of the word for it, but it basically lets it accept all packets, whether or not it's designated for that. I think you or not. might have to have it as a rep pie as in between probably device. a pie or something. Because you want it to be in between your wireless and your modem. So in reality, it should be behind. Oh, between. do you have to do that? Well, that's the best way to do it. Well, you can do that or there. Yeah. Or do what? There is the. I think it's called promiscuous mode or something like that, that you can make network adapters be in. Oh. It basically will just take in all packets. True. Yeah. So, um, and since. Uh, AKA Kali Linux. Yeah, basically. <laughs> as soon as you get on the network. Yeah, because with that, you wouldn't need to be something as. I think you'd still miss some packets that way, probably, but. You'd probably get a lot of them at least. If you put it in line between your router and your modem, you'd get them all. But mm-hmm. well, at least with that, you would get everything. But you wouldn't know who was talking, though. Oh no, that's some of the other stuff. This wasn't the first one. There was another one. Somebody ended up having their they their boss ended up getting all, a bunch of devices. Just mm-hmm. went out, got tons of smart devices, Mm -hmm. put the box in and said, listen, I want you to review this. I want to see what is, what happens. And yes, you cannot, okay, if it's uh, it's not encrypted, it sometimes says exactly what it is. If it is encrypted, here's the catch, is it's also, you have to, you know, like if you, if somebody's saying they're gathering information for like a month or so, you start realizing what some of these devices could be. And also, you might know what they are because even though they're encrypted, you still know where they're going. Oh. You just don't know what the information is. So if it was like uh, August, something going to august.com or the whatever the locks or, website yeah. is. Or Oral B. You, you know it's either a keypad or a lock. Apparently, toothbrushes are not encrypted also, by the way. They make smart toothbrushes? Yes. Huh. They, I, I, I don't know why I'm surprised. Well, well, it says how well you brush your teeth and how often you're brushing your teeth. And it's good for, you know, when you're trying to, like, monitor yourself or trying to get, like, help improve. Uh, see, the law of baby devices. Yeah. Those are non-encrypted. 
lots the of baby what, monitors. I don't think we're ever encrypted. Well, but baby monitors. There's a uh, baby uh, unitard. Yeah, a baby th- unitard. Yes, they're. You put it on the baby. It monitors its heart rate, whether its skin is warm or cold, whether it's breathing. Okay, that makes sense. Not encrypted. Yeah. Goes right. Yeah. Why if, would it be? If somebody's on your network, they could just. Oh, yep. And because it's not encrypted, they also can alter the information, which means since it goes out, you know, it's it's like the echoes and the home assistants. Mm-hmm. It goes out to the server. Unencrypted. Then, uh, you know, unencrypted to them. <laughs> comes back to your device. Which hey, means encrypting stuff takes a lot of power. Yeah. <laughs> sure. But that means anyone that uh, man in the middle attack literally sits there and goes, oh, well, let's just, hey, uh, you're in a different sp- uh, spot of the house prepping breakfast or dinner It'd or whatever. It'd be one else. thing if it was unencrypted from the device to the hub. It is. I know. It'd be one thing if oh, it was yeah. that and then, enc- and then enc- it was encrypted after that point. It's still not good, but it's mm-hmm. better. But it doesn't sound like that's the case. Well, there's also... Um, it's just unencrypted the whole way through. We're, we're, we're totally sidetracking with stuff that I even show notes. Just stuff I've been <laughs> looking at. Uh, there is a doggy treat thing. Doggy yeah. treat. A smart doggy treat? Yes. You can like have it toss a doggy treat and then like oh. talk to your dog and you can see your dog and all this other stuff. So you can like watch video and all this. My cousin was actually working on something like that. Um, somebody did some research on it and they as they they just well let's see here they didn't have any logins just like okay connect to my device hmm. and they're like this seems odd what if i type in a different number oh no yeah and they it, connected it, to someone's random they, device somewhere they did they had no clue who but they were like contact the company like hey um you need to fix this <laughs> like i can i can see somebody's camera and the company was good well, you, sometimes when people tell you, like, hey, your device has a security flaw, they, they ignore it or they sue you. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, but they were like, what? What do you mean? Explain. And the, the company is in, like, Japan. So, in other words, it took a while to, it, or it took him, like, a, a couple hours to get them to realize what he was explaining. Oh. And to actually believe him. They finally like moved it up the chain haphazardly, kind of like I don't know about this or mm-hmm. I don't know what to do with this. Person uh, got a hold of somebody more important. They were like, "Oh, that that is bad." Could here we we have one set up in the warehouse right now. Here, if I give you the information, can you like tell me what it's showing? He's like, "Sure." Types it in. Yeah, you see this, and we yeah. Well, you're swinging stuff in front of it. Yep. They're like, uh. How do we fix this? <laughs> like, they had no clue. They thought they were doing okay. So he helps them out. Sucks. He goes through stuff. Helps them out. Everything. Great. And then he goes, I wonder what else we can do. Because, like, you can toss treats and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Well, let's see if I can do that. Because now we, they've, been, they've encrypted the camera feed. Well, still so can toss a random treat from a random one. Called up. They're like, yep, we okay, you, we know who you are. Straight to the right person. They're <laughs> like, hey, the machine's over there again. Yep. Toss treat. Yep. Tossing treats. <laughs> <laughs> so they yeah, had a nuts. yeah, but it was really nice that they were willing to work with him and they were not not just be mad at him for like, hey, you're ruining our product. They're like, no, we want to succeed at this. Mm-hmm. Thank you for helping us. You know, please help us more. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the nice thing about. So it's the. IoT inspector project back on the Princeton thing that you brought up. Yes. This can monitor who is talking back and forth, which is also good to monitor if there's additional packets that are kind of being weird. W- along with additional news from this week, we had routers got infected. There is a lot of details about it and a lot of technical details about this looking into it. Basically, they believe uh, at least 500,000 types of routers were, inf- or at least 500,000 routers were infected, and they think that's a low number. Because they're like, technically it's this chipset, technically it's these things, but, you know, depending on updates and all stuff, we're like, so for the most part, if you have a Linksys, TP Link, uh, 
Netgear. Oh yeah, there's some Netgear ones. Cisco. On there. I mean, there's just it's all over the you know like so pretty much everyone's in fact you know it pretty much sounds like everyone's infected. The they go the they say Russian hack. It doesn't really matter with that, but just these they could they create a a botnet that could take down lots of important information or chunks of the internet Mm -hmm. to fix this people are saying reboot your router i read somewhere else that might not do it and i kind of agree with them reset your router push the button on the back hold it for however long it needs log back into it change your passwords Change the lo- change your Wi-Fi password. Change your login password. Change your password away from password. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's it, a way to check to see if you've been infected. No, I couldn't find anything about. It. Just like they're like, oh, you may have been infected. So yeah, factory or it's factory reset your router. Uh, setting up port forward sucks. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. We'll look into that. If I. It, cause it doesn't say anything. It doesn't say anything. It talked about like so the technicality of the chips, and I understand that. Oh, and among the other things, which I might also do, which could also help save it, is to make it where your router could not be accessed unless it's directly, you know, unless you p- physically plug a cable into it locally, so you can't change any of the settings. That can help a lot. So of the not time over too. Wi-Fi, basically. Not over Wi-Fi and not over the internet. That's still like if you have a Wi-Fi access point connected to it, that still won't stop them. Yeah. Because it's they're technically route wired in. Yeah. There's a lot of ways in back and forth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it might stop your neighbors though. <laughs> uh, I mean, if your neighbors even care, they might just want your internet access anyways. Dang neighbor kid. I know. But, yeah, so there's that. So reset your routers. Sorry. Reset as in factory reset. Factory reset. Don't just reboot it. Yes. Do not turn it on and turn it, or turn it off and turn it back on again. Push the button on the back, then turn it off and turn it back on, and then put all your information back. Also hold it. So, like, you're going to press the button and hold it there. With, like, a pen or pencil. And then watch its lights as if you're uh, suffocating it. Mm. <laughs> when they go out, you're good. Or they, or they might just all suddenly flash really bright. Or flash works, too. Some of them do some different stuff. Mine, the light will just go out. Aww. As if you, you killed it. And you, you kind of did. You killed the botnet node. Potentially. Yeah. But, yeah. So there's that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so also with that research, like the Princeton, that would have actually caught some of the random extra traffic. Plus you also get to see what your devices do because there's so many smart devices out there for various prices a lot of people go oh only buy the expensive stuff because the security's behind it no, 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 no. that does not <laughs> that's not always true no, the expensive stuff doesn't always have the security behind it the cheap stuff sometimes does have the security behind it you know when you can pick up a light bulb for two dollars from one company and forty dollars from another company Sometimes you'd be surprised that the two dollar one has more security. Mm-hmm. Not always. Don't go with that completely. <laughs> Do your homework. But this helps your homework. So if you, especially where there's so many things where you, they don't say whether they monitor your information until you get to your device home and say, like the smart toothbrush. Okay, great. I want you to tell me on the toothbrush, am I brushing my teeth right? Great. Oh, by the way, you, you didn't tell me you collect that information. Mm-hmm. I did not want you to collect that information. It's in their privacy policy. Yeah, after no, 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 it's in their privacy policy. They don't put forward until after you have purchased your product. Yeah, and then you have to just go take the product back if they'll if they'll take it back because you have now opened an electronic device. Sometimes they won't take it back. Depends on where you buy it. True. Usually, there's a restocking fee, though. Yes, there's that. Yeah, which is stupid because now you're paying money. Because you were not informed in advance. And apparently if you've been doing this too much with Amazon, they'll just shut down your account. I think it depends on the reason. Yeah. Lack of information. Yeah. It's a killer. I know. And unfortunately it's a waste of our time and a waste of our money if we really want to care. 
Yeah, but, especially for like a five dollar device. Yes. Oh man. Yeah. Go all the way up to Idaho Falls to go buy some smart devices because nothing here, nobody here sells them. <laughs> when they get home, oh hey, we're uh, spying on you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, sign this thing. Oh, you don't want to sign it? Sorry. Doesn't work then. You got to go back. Mm-hmm. I have return it. Maybe pay a fifteen percent restocking fee. Maybe not. Maybe yeah. not even be able to take it back. Yeah. I'm Maybe. hoping a lot of that. That's why I'm hoping with a lot of the. Uh, the oh, that's actually something else with all this with the European Union, and all oh. the emails we've been getting. Yeah. I've gotten like fifteen or twenty of them. Uh, it's I'm setting them aside to like go through them. Some of them are if you don't do anything with this, your account's going to get shut down. Some of these are if you don't do anything, you still your account still exists. Uh, by not doing anything, you agree to our terms. By not doing anything, you don't agree to our terms. That one, unless they're actually the one that says that if you don't do anything, you agree to our terms. I think that one is against the European regulations. No, well, there okay. are some ways around it, but I think most of the time it is. Well, except for the European regulations, also. They have built in that the people that don't want their stuff monitored have to say, what do you have on me? They have to go to the company. What do you have on me? Mm-hmm. What are you using it for? Give it to me or right. delete my stuff. Yeah. But obviously, if you delete, if you say delete my stuff, that means you can never, no longer use their product. Mm-hmm. But, and also, there's actually companies that uh, ended up going, we can't work in Europe anymore. They've shut down stuff. They're like, we, if you're... If we are not work, we're not going to have anything with Europe until we get this stuff fixed to avoid any fines and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And if they find out that you're a European citizen, because this does not just cover Europe, it covers everyone who's a an EU citizen. Yeah. So if you're living in the U.S. and they find out you're an EU citizen, they will shut down your account and delete your information for you because they can't do that. There, they can't legally support that. And I think a lot of people are starting to like cut blanket cover everything because nobody asked everyone, you know, asked what, where do you live? No one asked what's your citizenships. Yeah, that's true. And some of the larger companies were like, yeah, whatever. We don't care. We wanted to do this stuff anyways. Some, mm. <laughs> some of them, yeah, it's like, uh, drat. <laughs> so that with that coming out though, there may be more identifiers plus they're meeting. To identify internet or smart devices and set regulations, the only thing is a lot of places have already gone their direction and some of the enforcements they're trying to come down with is for mesh networks, they're for your internet, so you can be anywhere in your house and have it. They said they all should be the same. And all the companies went, no. They also be the same, like what? Like they all could work with each other. You could buy a Google. You could buy a, um, uh, Air Air Airy Arrow. Airy, I think it's Airy. So you you buy all the parts to make your own mesh network on your house. Mm-hmm. So you, and you can mix and match anybody. Just for like, just for your internet, your general internet. Okay, sorry, <laughs> for your general internet. So it's not like cellular or anything. No. Okay. But everyone said no because this rule was too late and people companies already have stuff out. Of course they don't want to, you know, in reality they they want it's a competition. They don't want to have that information. And that's the biggest thing also with all these smart devices. Figuring out who works with who and then they don't want to really a lot of them don't want to work with each other. Mhm. That really sucks actually a lot. Or sometimes they'll sometimes add stuff and it's kind of like half baked and yeah. Mm-hmm. Direct competitors don't like working with each other. Who would have thought? I know. It's like a net neutrality thing or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the sign up. Well, we'll put the sign up in the show notes. If it's, o- uh, I don't think it's open yet. It's just to help our research. IOT inspector. Did you click on the IOT inspector? Well, no. The go to, right there. That link? Yeah. Yeah. And I have oh, okay. Help research and email us to join the wait list. Oh. Well, dang. What am I going to do on my Saturday afternoon now? Hey, they might still let you sign up. 
I mean, they'll let me sign up. But well, they, they might might say, "Hey, we like you." That sounds you, like random good. citizen. I like you. Yeah, and then they can also see yeah you know, help with research. Tell us what IoT devices you currently have. What devices you're interested in buying in? Yeah. That's cool. You have to email them. That's the other thing is I wish they had like a list of like these are the devices we found issues with. And I think they plan on doing that eventually. And I I honestly hope they get away they can get this information out because I think a lot of companies should be you know publicly shamed for this type of stuff. What they're probably doing is they're giving like. 90 days for the companies to comply or whatever. Well, you mean to not maybe they don't to have to comply to not anything. Not comply, I know, but, but yeah. to, to at least say that, okay, we'll fix this. We'll, we'll probably fix this or to ignore it. And then after a set amount of days, cause I know a lot of like white hat people or even black hat people, they'll do that. And then the black hats will say, Hey, fix this or fix this and give me money or. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bad stuff will happen. Or we'll just expose it. And then everybody knows your flaw. Ah. Bad press. I guess, yeah, there's that. Like, I guess that one company, they just didn't realize their flaws, so. They didn't understand how to do security. <laughs> what else? There's all sorts of good internet things. I know. Let's talk about our Patreon page. Oh boy. We have Tell a Tell pa- me about it. <laughs> I will. We have a Patreon page and you can when we have a and we have a we have Patreon. We'll just go I'm making that plural. <laughs> Patreon. And we you can uh donate one dollar and you get our as it says, gratitude for liking us. And I still say Lots of gratitude. It's very helpful. But you get to join our Discord ch- chat group. You can chat with us. Or you can donate $5 and you can get the Discord chat and you can get the podcast early. You will get a special RSS link just for you. Ooh. What does that do for you? That means you get the podcast early because uh, patrons get the podcast earlier than everybody else. Oh, okay. Yes. And if you want to, if you want to advertise, we have our we have a special thirty dollar one too. Do you just like put the RSS link in your podcast app? Yeah, and it'll just download it whenever something gets pushed. Yep. Oh, okay. That wasn't around. The RSS was really popular, so I don't know how it works. Well, but what's funny is there's still lots to do with it, especially with podcasts and everything. I know that's a lot of the background stuff, and if you just you know, or for like iTunes and Google Play and uh, what's the other one? Uh, Stitcher. Who else? There's another one that just, you, if you just Spotify, that's the other one. You just kind of like do your thing. But I've done all the RSS stuff in the background. If you have other podcasts that are a little more sophisticated, you can like Pocket Cast or something like that. You can grab the RSS feed and put mm-hmm. it in. But yeah, except you get that link and it's your link. Only yours? Only for you. Oh, cool. Individual. So if you stop donating, the link stops working. Oh, that makes sense. Yep. Oh, yeah. It helps us pay for all the stuff because I've been doing it for... We've been doing it for six years. It's awesome. It's fun. And it's, it gets expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, you can chat with us. Yeah, and, on Discord. Yeah. And then there's also, I'll do links or it's like a Snapchat type of thing in Discord. Or not Discord, in Patreon. So you can chat with us in uh, Discord, but there's a Snapchat-like thing. Really? Yeah. Actually, let's see if I can get this to work now. I get Patreon up and get our let our patrons know about this. And if we get enough patrons, we might actually do a live show or... Make more stuff. Uh, you choose tier lens. Oh, there's an update. Cool. Like like this, and then we can take a picture of the shout outs and the stuff. Hey, see, and there's. We upload that, and it's gone. 
Well, it's not gone, but everyone can see it. It's called Lens in Patreon. In Patreon. Patreon. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Taking a picture of the live. Of the recording. Mm-hmm. It looks just like Snapchat. Oh, it even does the whole bar thing. And yeah. It goes away, except for, you know, it doesn't disappear well. Supposedly disappear. Yeah, it doesn't actually disappear. It, it, you, you, you can review it as many times as you like, over and over. Up for 24 hours. What an exciting time to be alive. I know. Let's see. I feel like there was more things. Oh, yeah. Speaking of your smart devices, uh, apparently Amazon's Madame A, also known as the keyword I don't like to say because it triggers it, yeah, it records your history. And there was somebody who device recorded it and sent it off to a colleague. And they had no clue until the colleague was like, uh, dude. So uh, Google's been doing this for a while. Well, Google has been recording. Yeah, Google does. Yeah. So is Apple. Like, it records every request you make to it. Yeah. I've l- listened to mine. It's oh, weird. So you actually found it in Google's too? Mm-hmm. Oh, they're interesting. You can also hear whenever, if it doesn't pick up the keyword the first time, you can hear yourself say it again. Because <laughs> it listens for like five seconds before I've actually had mine like apologize to me because I told it it was worthless. Oh. Yeah, it's like, I'm sorry. I'm like... Uh, and now I feel bad. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's interesting that they exposed that. Well, I think people started having lots of issues, but you also can now go in and delete it. So you delete. I have air quotes here. I know. Well, especially where we know that Google doesn't delete anything because it's harder because where they store it in multiple locations for our convenience mm-hmm. it's really hard to do to, to actually, actually make delete. sure something's deleted yeah so well, they they're just gonna like, have to do it now well they mark it for deletion or some yeah they might yeah that's gonna be interesting you can mark it for deletion it doesn't mean like doesn't actually it just gets rid of the index unless they the european law doesn't the regulation doesn't make it to where they have to zero it out does it i don't know they just have to get rid of the record that might be it because um, cause that stuff's recoverable, because you could even call up Google like, oh, I deleted something. They don't know what the item is. They just go, well, if you said you deleted it this time. We'll pull information that you had existing before that moment. Yeah, they got snapshots. Yeah. but with Well, where it's not really deleted. Yeah. So. But if they have to actually delete stuff, they even have to delete it off their snapshots too, huh? Good. Well, well it's not, not, no, it's not just snapshots, because... You know, what I'm saying is not deleted. Is they just, you know, it nothing's deleted until you write over it again. I know. But and they just have so much storage. I'm just saying that if they take backups, they have to delete it in their backups too, I think. And I don't know if a lot of companies have thought of that. Huh. <laughs> It'll be interesting. Because if they have to ever restore back, like you tell them, oh, hey, I want you to delete this stuff. Well, that hard drive crashes in like five minutes, the stuff that your stuff was stored on. Yeah. So they restore it. Oh, look, your data's back. Oh, look, they didn't tell you that it's back. Hmm. That'd be interesting. So I don't know how that's going to work. There's all sorts of... There's a lot. And these things are be good to be identified right now. In fact, Facebook's even doing good at going, we won't... We're only using the information that you give us or that you do while on Facebook. If you're on... If, if it needs our cookies, it's gone. We're not using those anymore. So you can actually turn that part off. Wait, you can turn off cookies? Facebook cookies. Huh. Interesting. Just means you get ads. So when it's when people are using ad, Facebook AdSense on external websites, mm-hmm. it's very generic instead of specialized. Hmm. I'm like, hmm, whatever. But it also doesn't gather your information on that. I have ad blockers, so I'm not so worried about that. And Electronic Frontiers, Privacy Badger. Highly recommend those things. That stops cookies. Privacy Badger does? Privacy Badger stops cookies. Hmm. It's an Electronic Frontiers thing. They came out that ugh, I don't even know how long ago now. But it stops third-party cookies. Which sometimes sucks when you're trying to use Facebook as a login. But, <laughs> <laughs> so you have to like, okay, allow this one. Because it can get very technical. So where you're on the Verge, it would allow the Verge uh, cookies, but like... Something from Google AdSense, it wouldn't allow a cookie from them. Correct. Only on the Verge, though. Oh yes. So if you were to be on Google AdSense, it would 
the cookies would work? Correct. Okay. Google's would. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a lot of GPUs. Holy crap. Only it's only twenty. <laughs> only? Only. Sorry. When they cost like a thousand dollars right now? It depends on which ones you get. Well the well, the ones you want to use for crypto mining. Are those USB ports? They are. Actually are they? Yeah. No, they might be a one X. PCI Express. Yeah. They look like USB three panel ports though. Yeah. So much more fun. It just technology. Yeah, this this is straight up for crypto mining. And there, there is, uh, there is USB, uh, GPUs. Yeah, they are just historically have been bad, but USB 3.0 they actually have enough bandwidth to be good now. Assuming you got they got the power, and I could see them being 3.0 ports, because it doesn't. It's not really a necessarily a lot of data. It's just a lot of cycles mm-hmm. going through it. Yeah, I think those are 3.0 ports. They look like it. If you click on the image, what happens? By allowing USB razor cables to plug directly into the oh. PCP or PCIe. Yeah. That does nothing. But Aces came out with... I don't know. Crypto mining is fun and all, but... Its heyday was eight years ago. It, it, it'll come and go. It'll... It'll have its pros and cons, or, you know, it'll come back, okay, everybody. Are the AS- like, is ASIC not the thing anymore? Do you have to go back to GPU mining? Meaning? They had these specialized, like, I think they were called ASIC devices, which were made specifically for crypto mining. They weren't even GPUs. Oh, you're talking about the crypto mining boxes, like Kodak has? Yeah, they were just, they were tiny, well, not tiny devices, but relatively tiny compared to a... The crypto mining rigs? Yeah, I think they use like ASIC or something. I'm used to like seeing the entire machines, like Kodak yeah, ASIC. even. Right there, ASIC. ASIC? Yeah, AC. It's You were hovered over it. Oh, it's... It says it in the title. ASIC. A-S-I-C. Oh. Bitcoin miner ASIC. Interesting. I know they took one of the Kodak, uh, bought it into one of these and slapped their sticker on it. <laughs> Kodak? Kodak. Like the camera company. Yes. All right. I thought they went out of business. No, they they, they saved themselves by buying uh, crypto miner rigs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those came out like, uh, I think, CES early this year or late last year. I don't know. Or E3. No, that would be weird, actually, E3. E3 is coming up, though, and there's going to... Uh, Bethesda's got t- uh, a talk, a big old long talk. Sony and Nintendo are prepping up stuff. Microsoft's prepping up things. I'm excited for Nintendo's one. Yeah, I'm excited for Bethesda's because they finally released a little quick video of their new Fallout that's <laughs> coming out. And they're, do you think they're also going to unveil their 20th release of Skyrim? No, no, no. That's what this is. This I is know. this is Skyrim. You know. Oh, oh <laughs> this is because I usually like bounce it back and forth between uh, Fallout and Skyrim or uh, Elder Scrolls, but Elder Scrolls did get a new update or like, just have a new expansion. The MMO. Yeah. Okay. Elder Scrolls Online or ESO. 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 Like summer something. Makes sense because you know summertime. Yeah. It's summer. set. It is summer set. I was like, is it? In the city. I was actually looking at It's available June 5th. Ooh. That's in six days? Seven? Well, okay. the time of the recording. All right. <laughs> when this comes out, it'll be in... It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, people. It's Tuesday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well... Tuesday. Depending on when you're listening. Because it may have been the Tuesday previous, or the Tuesday of last year, or, you know... The year is 2018. Let's go with that. <laughs> yeah, if you are listening in 2018 between the months of May and June, then it might still be Tuesday. Yes. And it might be Tuesday the day you're listening to this. I and was looking is, at... I hope it's been a good Tuesday. I was looking at the uh, limited edition one. Uh, like the digital or the physical one? Physical. I always love the... Uh, the little the figurines you get? Yeah. 
Uh, not bad. Oh, look at the little kitty. Yeah. It's not very little. The uh, Khajiits. Oh, Khajiits, okay. Yeah. They're I usually my, fa- they my favorite race because you can Khajiit see in the like night. Khajiit like to sneak. Yeah. That was a terrible link. It's the same link. It is the same link. It's still a terrible link. Oh, yeah. You clicked on the ad and then you clicked on the first one, which yeah. has to be the same. Okay. Collector's Edition. There we go. I really, that's just going to send me back to the. I should have, like, give me, like, Amazons. <laughs> yeah, just go to Amazon. There you go. Yes. 90 bucks. Uh huh. Ooh. Comes with a map. Uh, what is that? A spider lady? Yep. I'm sure she's the antagonist. And then you get, like, a book with a, a bookmark thingy, like a bookmark ribbon. And you get a cool box. It's always cool to have a box. Boxes are nice. I miss the boxes. The Mephala statue. A monument to the Daedric Prince Mephala. Mephala? 12-inch tall replica was unearthed from a cultist shrine. So it's a foot tall. Yeah. Dang. Map of Somerset. Steel case book, or steel book case. Oh, so the box is steel. Yes. That's cool. I like that. My right, Halo 5 limited edition was that way it did not come with a game it came with a digital download even though it was a physical copy i was very upset oh actually i wouldn't even care about physical or digital on this well no because it's a it's a pc game but yeah still though it's cool actually it probably won't come with a cd because who has cd drives anymore let me check i'm pretty sure you have one yeah, I don't have a CD drive. I have a DVD drive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, my computer has a Blu-ray disc drive. Get Ooh. take that. <laughs> I bought one. I never installed it though. <laughs> it's still in the plastic crap. <laughs> well, if you want, I'll just put it in. My, I'll, I'll take out my zip drive and I'll throw it in if you want me to. You have a zip drive in your computer? Maybe. Do you really? No, not this one. <laughs> Does that make it better? <laughs> I did have one for the longest time. Actually, I think I had zip drives on my computer longer. I had floppy drives. I woke up the dog. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> zip drives were not very popular. My computer had, like, my school computers had them. And, uh. You could store, like,. A hundred megs on it. I know, <laughs> and or two hundred and fifty if you had the expand or the uh, the newer one. And that was mind blowing to me, but no one ever had zip drive discs. They either had floppy drives, like discs, diskettes, mm-hmm. or CD ROMs, or mini discs, or mini discs. Even actually, no, I only had one teacher who had a mini disc, and I wish mini discs were more of a thing because they were awesome. That's Sony failing again. They just uh, didn't hit their market. <laughs> I I had zip drive zip disks, and they were as great as USBs. Went through the wash, still survived. Not even some USB drives can do that. I know. They just die. I oh, see. I probably should move that over. All right. Let's. It's time we got. Hey, we're only like halfway through. Now nah, we got time. Let's go with a new location okay. based. Phone game. Oh, it's location. Oh, yeah. Duh. You told you were yeah. telling me about that. So, so this lo- one, I, I want to try to describe it with the little amount of knowledge I know. Does so think think Pokemon Go? It's location based, right? Mm-hmm. You uh, you catch your your dinosaurs. So you basically replace the Pokemon with dinosaurs, and then you you add some like fighting, and whatnot. How do you catch them? Do you use uh, do you use a uh, Jurassic Park balls? <laughs> no, that would be. I have to admit, it was interest. It was very interesting. Do you use a rope? Nope. Um, a jar of peanut butter. <laughs> no. Okay, I don't know. You take out your drone. Oh, a drone! I need to think twenty first century. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you get your darts. That's your limited item. And you shoot it at them. And to make them sleep. Uh, actually, uh, that was that's why I originally thought when I during my first practice, huh. I thought you kept shooting darts at them until they passed out and you had them. No, you keep shooting darts at them, and you collect DNA. 
after you get so much DNA. You clone it? Yeah. So you don't even capture it. You just clone it. Nope. Huh. And then after you get more DNA. You, Dino DNA. You evolve it. You evolve it? You can evolve them. I guess that makes sense. Well, or at least level them. You can so evolve. Do you evolve I haven't. The- if, do you evolve the one that you grow, or do you just grow another one? You evolve the one you grow, because like you need like fifty Dino DNA I guess DNA for the first clone, and then you need a hundred Dino DNA of that Dino to evolve them to level two. So does it go Raptor? No, it stays. So far, it stays the same. There's like oh, does it just change the size or something? No, it doesn't even change that. What? It, it adds like better attacks. Oh, and there's apparently like some subgroup stuff that I've been Can looking you get at. Shiny ones yet? No, there's oh, rare okay. ones, or there's oh. common and there's uncommon, or they say rare. Oh, so yeah, shinies. Yeah, you can then. Yeah, I guess there is. They're just not shiny or different colored. Lame, I don't want it. Um, no, that seems like a cool game. It's... Okay, so... Did we ever say the name of the game? Jurassic Park Alive. There you go. That's the thing we're talking about. Yes. So, this is not made by Google or Niantic. No, Niantic. This is a totally different company. They do say they use Google Maps. I mean, I think everybody uses the Google Maps API. Yeah, because if you don't, it's usually not good. The other one is Bing. I think <laughs> Yahoo Maps is still around. Amazon or Apple tried. Apple Apple's Maps are good now. Oh, I thought they kept on using Google's. Oh, they might actually be using the API. I don't know. Yeah. I used the. I used it today. Yeah, it works. But. I had a nice British lady talking to me. So, okay, like this is the third location-based app game that I've played. Google's, the two of them are Google, so there's mm-hmm. Ingress, Pokemon Go, and now this one. Ingress, and I also went back to Ingress after some time. Ingress was very, because you had to drive around and collect your energy so you could do your stuff. So it was very driving-based. Mm-hmm. Plus, you could also only, we were hacking these locations to get resources out of them and to capture them and all that. You could only hack, you only could hack them so many times and then you attacked them or you put your resources on them to take them over. But once you take them over, you know, that's worthless to you. So and you could hack them like every five minutes and you only could do it like three times. And then it burned out for oh. like two hours. Like Pokemon Go, you can, as every five minutes you can spend that thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. This one. Uh, okay. Uh, the second one. The funny one. Of course. <laughs> you really don't know it? I think okay. you changed it. No, I haven't changed it. Okay. So I have to get to it now. I always tell my, everyone my password that currently is, and then uh, I would have asked you for it, but I, you probably don't want to say it on the podcast. I think that's I typed it right. It is Happy Jellyfish. There you go. <laughs> that's what I was going to change it to. Come on. <laughs> okay, uh, you're talking about location-based games. Oh yes, still talking about. Okay, so yeah, but Ingress was very driving. It was because you don't want to stay in the area very long. And it was absolutely worth it to drive to locations. There's zero reason to walk because the ener- cause you could burn up your... Because there's these little floating things that you gather energy. Once you pass through there, you collect it. The other thing also, if you collect it and somebody's coming behind you, it'll disappear on them. Like So if, if multiple people go through at the same time, they all collect it at the same time, the equal amount. But, but if they're staggered behind you, yeah, they won't. They won't. So it's really interesting that way. Uh, walking, I have played the game walking. You kind of have to hit larger areas, and it doesn't quite work as well. It, you know, it's better driving. And also, this is officially. I've only played it on Google right now. I don't know if it's on Android. I guess you're checking that or on Apple. I mean, it looks like it is. Okay, cool. It is on. Just if you type in Jurassic World. There are so many other Jurassic World apps. It is not the first thing that shows up. You have to type Jurassic World Alive. Yes. At least as the time at the time of this recording. And I'm sure there's going to be all sorts of like rip off and name close names. It'll be the same thing. 
but at least Jurassic World is technically well, of course, of course so is Pokemon. But and they're still the wanna be rip off of those. Um so Pokemon is very walking based. Mm-hmm. You hatch your eggs, you Which do all good. this stuff. I like it. And I enjoy it. In fact this one uh, and then that I'm I'm going to stick with Pokemon in the long term. This one just like try, I've been trying out. And also Inger you know, because Pokemon you, you can still spend money. Get mm-hmm. your more eggs, you know, get the Poke coins to but buy stuff. You can also walk and easily get all the stuff without spending yeah. money. Uh, take over gyms, things like that. It's not play to win. Yeah, you don't have to. Uh, Ingress did the sim. Did this? Uh, they didn't. There was no money involved at all. Before when I, be, so how did they make money? They decided to do the same thing. You can buy these special energy things, and then they buy special items. So you could. It, they're just like upgrade versions of what you can get in the game already. Okay. So it's like, eh, whatever. Plus also where you can only hold one key for each location. So each location you visit, you have one key. And the nice thing about the key is that you need that key in Ingress to link the portal you're standing at to another portal. Because you want to, when you link a portal, you get extra points. When you link three portals together. It fills it in. It, yeah, you make a field. And you get more points and you... You're kind of because they're in Ingress. There's only two teams: those that are, you know, alien sympathizers, and those that are alien, you know, thinking the aliens are going to here to destroy us. So you're trying to get you. You make these fields. It, the idea is you make these fields to make people think your way. <laughs> All I know is I signed in on the app once just to see how the how the map looked. Yeah, there were some big areas colored in, like hundreds of miles. Oh, oh no, Southeast Rainer was colored in. By one team, and after a week, the everyone was mad at the person who did it, and even people on that team because you can't do anything, you can't grow, you can't advance your character, you can't advance uh, in game or anything. Yeah, because you have to be able to make these fields. Once you're under a giant field, Nothing nobody is. can make more fields anymore. Yeah, so there were people on that person's team going, "I will give rides to anybody on the other team to break this thing." <laughs> yeah, it just it wasn't fun, and plus there's still major events that you hey go to Salt Lake City and we're gonna all meet up together and you get special coins and special events and you decide the fate of how the, you know the, how everything's going. Uh, kind of like you know not they're actually kind of a little more of a group people or a group of people or you know a larger group of people to getting together in certain areas. Unlike with Pokemon Go, where it's, hey, the event's happening today. Everyone where you're standing, congrats. Or in your own particular country, you get access to Pokemon X. Mm-hmm. Well, these were like, no, go to Europe, go to Salt Lake, go to New York, whatever it is. We, there's going, you know, you will physically meet people and you're going to physically meet friends and foes. And mm-hmm. your foes are still going to be friends because <laughs> it's just fun. Um, so. Jurassic World Alive is absolutely worthless walking. Is it? Yes, there is absolutely zero reason. You incubate your dinosaurs. It's a. It's like mo- a lot of online games where you've played and then you've got your incubator. Is it time based? Yes. No. Anywhere from three minutes to eight hours, and you get that by you. You get most of those by fighting in the arena against other players. That's fine. I didn't want to have to compete between Pokemon Go and. Yeah. Jurassic World anyways. Because I've even walked around with it and there's nothing I couldn't figure out. The drone, I thought you always had to be within the circle of, you know, because you saw that radiant circle of your distance. No, you can go a little bit further, but it, it taxes the battery on your drone a little more. Oh. But I don't get how the drone battery gets life back. So Maybe it just slowly <laughs> gets it back. With, I guess. Maybe it's solar powered or something. Why? Well, maybe. Or um, maybe it's wireless powered. The locations they also have what they call their um drop loca- or uh drops. are they basically pokey stops no are they, I, do they have pokey stops they, they well they the have equivalent? drops they have they have supply drops and that is what the equivalent is how often do those respawn <laughs> okay this is also the other thing every 15 minutes mm-hmm. unless you watch the video yeah. it's one of those games too so you can... I regret downloading it. <laughs> I've kind of enjoyed it a little bit. I 
I don't like games like that that make you watch stuff. I don't, well, you know, you could just like spin the su- supply drop and then walk away and then come back to it in 15 minutes. Yeah, but... They are... The supply drop locations are permanent. Well, at least I haven't seen them move around at all. Plenty of them are really, really close to the same spots that uh, portals or Pokestops or Poke, uh, Pokemon gyms are. Plenty of them are. I wonder how they found that. Well, they you know there could be still these you know particular locations, and they're not all. And then there is like triple past that at random locations. Hmm. I don't know why they chose their locations. Some of them are literally like two feet away from each other. Some of them are a block away from each other. Randomly chosen via shotgun. Yeah, that's really what it feels like. And I also, once again, annoyed, I don't have a supply drop by, at my house. <laughs> <laughs> Three games now. I know. I even tried, with Ingress, I tried getting some special stuff, but I didn't have, my building wasn't unique enough. Oh. And my art piece fell down, melted over the winter. <laughs> <laughs> Your rep? Yeah. My Is that snowman. what RP stands for? Hmm? What's RP stand for? Uh... Did you say RP? No. My like, or my my uh my art piece. Art piece. Art. Sorry. I should define that. Oh, so it literally melted. It literally melted. Okay. I thought you were saying like it <laughs> melted and like figured it'll be speaking. No, no, no. And RP I think means like rep points and no. grant that data or something. So I thought that's what you were coining or whatever. No. Yeah. Computer. We're good. Okay. Figured it out. Um so also when you set up your drone you have you can usually get like two or three darts without too much effort. The fo- you can get up to six if you're if you can keep on target, but you have to hit the dinosaur like around its neck and then its middle back usually to gain the DNA. It'll bounce back and forth and if you hit the dot you get more DNA. So you could have zero of its DNA and mm-hmm. if you can stay on top of that um dot, you get twelve DNA each one, so you could you could le- you could get the dinosaur within the first sighting of it, if you can uh, keep on it, if you're you're good at controlling it. Or, oh no, you can pay ten bucks a month for the VIP package. Yeah, you get to hold more darts. Yeah, you get your drone gets to go further and has a better batter- better battery pack. And oh, also there is every six hours you do get a. Um, a free pack from it, or incubator pack. And if you pay, you also get the VIP pack. I don't know how often that is because I'm not paying ten bucks. Like that's really a lot of money for a monthly thing for it. I really am thinking about uninstalling it. I'm not joking. <laughs> I don't, don't want to support that. I don't blame you. No, but I, I've. You don't have to pay. And the dinosaurs don't have That's to be within the your. Point. The dinosaurs don't have to be within your little circle, and it makes sense because I always wondered how with Ingress they would do it, but I realized when I was playing it, they were using me to identify locations, and to see how this game would work. I mean, Ingress was out for years before Pokemon Go. They had worked out so many kinks out of it. That's why I, I was kind of surprised how the first little bit of Pokemon Go how bad it was hit. And how bad some of the stuff went, both them not being able to support everybody, except for the number of Ingress uh, users compared to Pokemon Go users, was ridiculously mm-hmm. different. <laughs> they just they didn't have it. I think they kind of figured it would be bad, but they didn't figure it would be that bad. Yeah. And I think the actual game servers were working, but the login servers weren't when Pokemon Go was first yeah. starting. They didn't like have enough of them or something. I guess that. So, like the book, and then you had the people who were just connecting to it and abusing the API to figure out where Pokemon are spawning. Yeah, PokeVision. True, I forgot about that one. Actually, I kind of wish it was still around because I'm currently trying to get Ghost Pokemon, and also when they keep on going, like, oh, we would like you to get your, for your research product. Could you, you get three poison types? By the way, uh, we just stopped loading poison types. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like. 
Why? <laughs> I'd like Pokey Vision just because it the augmented reality stuff's fun. It's not really taken advantage of in Pokemon Go. Yeah. Actually, that's the other thing also with the you know, Jurassic World uh, Alive is you can really plan it out. Like, you can see dinosaurs for, like, miles. You can even, like, click on them, mm-hmm. you know, clear out there. You know, obviously, he's too far away. Holy crap. But that's the other thing is that's you – once you see the dinosaur, it goes into your temporary thing of, like, you have seen this dinosaur. Hmm. You see, I could be 157 feet away and I can launch my drone. Maybe I'll do it after the podcast because there's so much. But your little circle, you have – that has to be within the drop. The the uh, supply drop. Uh, there's tons of them all over the place. But they're far enough away for the most part, I would say, drive. Like, you could plan out, you know, oh, that's a rare. And then the rare dinosaurs have, like, a little blue circle underneath them. So you could totally, like, I want that dinosaur. That's a rare one. And then just for also playing early, you they also are giving out packages. So even though you signed up, you are getting you will gain. I think you get a Velociraptor for free. Cool. That makes sense. I think Velociraptor is kind of the mascot yeah. of Jurassic Park, of Jurassic World. And what about T Rex? I mean, that's the official Jurassic <laughs> Park na- mascot. But I do have to admit, okay, so T Rex has the short name, has a nickname for a name that's not even that hard to say. Tyrannosaurus Rex is not that. There is so many dinosaurs. I'm just like, why don't more of these dinosaurs have nicknames? Because they're not cool. The T-Rex is the, the big head with the little arms. <laughs> and the, you hear there's mini T-Rexes? Mini T-Rexes? Yeah. Like legit? Yeah, like legit. Like kind of raptor size, still in groups. but they, Oh, it's cute. Yeah. But instead of like raptors where they, you know, they still move quickly, but they still have the, you know. So, smaller head, smaller body, smaller mm-hmm. arms. <laughs> so, it's just a freaking derpy raptor, basically, with short arms. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. There you go. If a pack of those were running up on me, I'd still be terrified, but... If a pack I'd of die. anything was running up on me, I'd probably be ter- terrified. Uh, yeah, a pack of your little dogs would be terrifying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They might lick you to death. <laughs> Yeah, after they go for the jugular. Yep. Got Tendons. Lap up that blood. Yeah. Rip out the tendons. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? You have one more item. Uh, Actually, you got two more items. Yeah. Three if you count the one that's the, been on there the forever. One that, yeah, no, the one that we just... My rant. I'm going to go off on one day. It's kind of like the pink ping pong well joke I finally yeah. told. <laughs> yeah. Many famous last words ago. Uh... We've been going a while. Maybe I'll hold off. Okay, so I'm kind of curious how that one goes. Actually, I will throw this out real quick because it's going on right now. Uh, if you like classic Doctor Who, Doctor Who is on Twitch right now. And if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can take your you can subscribe to it for free because you can subscribe to a a Twitch channel, which you, uh, that usually gets rid of most of the ads and all the other stuff. Wait, it's on Twitch. It's on Twitch. Yeah, it's on Doctor, Twitch. They're streaming on Twitch. They're streaming on Twitch. What? Uh, weekdays. So I think they're already hit the second day. That'd be kind of cool because then you could participate in the chat room at the same time. Yeah, and they're showing like that's cool. Two or four episodes a day. I should probably have looked at that again. But they have it scheduled. I missed that when you said that. Uh, one, two, three. It looks like three episodes a day. Well, okay. I should re-say that. Because the old Doctor Who was a half-hour episode for... Okay, so three storylines a day so far. At least that's what it's starting off with. And it runs it three times a day, basically? It'll go through it, yeah. It runs it, it runs them three times a day. And it's running three stories. And these are Pacific Pacific Standard Time? Well, okay, so yeah, Pacific Daylight Standard... Daylight Savings Time, actually, sorry. Pacific Screen Time? Oh, yeah. Daylight Time. Yeah, I don't know. Like there's that. gonna be a link to it, but either way, Twitch. Go to Twitch. Starts at eleven. If you're on the West Coast, if you're on the East Coast, it starts at seven. Two. Mm. Wait, no, you said. Wait. Yeah, if you're on the East Coast. Oh, East Coast. That would be three hours ahead. Sure. Yes. <laughs> if you're in uh, Britain time, 
You already got yep. for free on Channel 4. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Forgot about that. Yeah. This is America's way of finally getting to watch it. Huh. Uh, but, yeah. Lots of fun. With that, now that we're over time, famous last words. Do you know the Muffin Man? I know the Muffin Man. The one that lives on Drury Lane? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>